Hi judges. Welcome to another segment of One Hour Liwag Memorial High School Senior High School Math TV. And for today, we will be discussing the different degenerate cases of a conic section. So let's start with the first conic section which is the circle. So when do we know that an equation will yield a circle? Okay, so that is our topic for today. If the given general equation of a circle will give us a graph of a circle. So determining when an equation yields a circle. Let us go back to the general form of the circle which is x squared plus y squared plus dx plus ey plus f is equal to zero. Remember that the right side is always equal to zero. And if there is a constant number here, all we have to do is to transfer that to the left side. Okay, and that becomes the value of f. D and E are the coefficients of X and Y. So why is it important? Why is D and E important in this equation? Because D and E will define the center of the circle. Again, so if we are given this general form of the circle, this equation, the values of the coefficients of X and Y will play an important role in determining the center of our circle. So we have three that we need to remember okay the first one is the equation really yields an equation of the circle first one it is really a circle second one it is a single point and the third one it is an empty set so let us first differentiate one from the other okay the first one let us first determine whether an, an equation yields a circle using the center and the formula for the center of the circle is very simple if we are given the general form. That is just negative d over 2 and negative e over 2. And that is the shortcut on how we could get the value of the center on how, on, or how we could locate the center of the given circle. So this is the formula. That is negative d over 2 and negative e over 2. So how do we get that? By just simply substituting the values of the coefficients of x and y. To find the center okay this is the radius now for the circle will be this formula we will be getting the radius using this formula and this formula is square root of d squared plus e squared minus 4f all over 4 so that is the formula in which we could get the radius but actually this is the, the important value for this one so I'll be calling that as the discriminant, okay? So why? Because it will tell us whether the equation becomes a circle, a single point, or an empty set because that is the numerator. In case that d squared plus e squared minus f is greater than zero, for example, we have 100, 1,000, 1 million, it is greater than zero, there, therefore we could finally say that our equation is really a circle. Again, if d squared plus e squared minus 4f is greater than 0 based on the given equation, therefore, we could finally say that our equation really yields a circle. Okay, for the next degenerate case, for the degener degenerate case, we have a single point. How do we know if an equation of a circle like this will have a degenerate case such as single point? Okay, again, if we have single point, therefore, that single point will now contain the center. Assumed to be the center of the circle, so the formula is the same for the center of the real circle. So that is negative d over 2 and negative e over 2. So how do we know if it is a single point? Remember that uh, if an equation of the circle is equal to zero or the right side or the radius is equal to zero if you have computed for the radius which is equal to zero therefore it becomes a single point if d squared plus e squared minus 4f becomes zero therefore it is a degenerate case of the circle and it becomes a single point and for the last degenerate case we'll be having the empty set so how do we get if the given is just an empty set? By just using, again, d squared plus e squared minus 4f. So, 
if the computed value for d squared minus e squared minus 4f is less than 0 or the value that you got is negative or the r that you got is negative, therefore, we will be calling this as an empty set. That is the, gen the, the generate case of a circle. So, it will be a single point or an empty set or really a circle. Okay, so in order to illustrate this given this um, this ideas regarding the degenerate cases of the circle and determining whether the circle yields uh, whether the whether the equation yields a circle, therefore will now be applying what we have learned from this one. Again, circle if the discriminant is greater than zero. Single point if the discriminant is equal to zero. Empty set if the discriminant is less than zero or if it is negative. So let us now try to solve for these examples. We have x squared plus y squared plus 4x minus 10y minus 20 is equal to zero. Okay, so let us first locate the center. So the, the center is located at negative d over 2 and negative e over 2. Therefore, this becomes our d is equal to 4, our e is equal to negative 10, and our f is equal to negative 20 for this one. Since the constant is now on the right, on the left side, and it is not on the right side since this is equal to 0, therefore, that is now the value of f. Okay? So, substituting the values of d and e to the center, therefore, this becomes negative d over 4, that is negative 4, negative d over 2, negative 4 over 2, negative e over 2, that is negative of negative 10 over 2. Therefore, the center now is located at negative 4 over 2, which is negative 2, negative of negative 10, that is positive 10 over 2. Therefore, the center is located at negative 2, positive 5. So, this is the center. So, we'll, um, let us now determine whether this center is really the center of the circle or is it just a single point okay by using the discriminant let us now get the discriminant later we'll get the radius for the discriminant that is d squared plus e squared minus 4f okay so using d squared plus e squared minus 4f therefore we'll be having 4 squared plus our e is negative 10 squared 4f, that is negative 4, times negative 20. Therefore, this is now equal to 16. Negative 10 squared is 100. Negative 4 times negative 20, that is positive 80. 16 plus 100 plus 80 will give us an answer of 196. And 196 is greater than 0. Therefore, we could say that this is really a circle. So, for the first example, this is a circle okay and what is the radius of the circle if this is a circle so the radius is very simple by using the formula the formula is d squared minus e squared minus 4f all over 4 but since we have computed for this value and that value is just equal to 196 that is our discriminant therefore r now is equal to the square root of 196 over 4 Okay, and the square root of 196 over 4 is just equal to the square root of 49. Therefore, R is equal to 7 units. Okay, so therefore, example number 1 is really a circle. Okay, for the second example, we now have x squared plus 4x plus y squared plus 6y is equal to negative 13. Remember that this is negative 13. Therefore, we need to transpose or transfer negative 13 to the other side. Therefore, this becomes x squared plus 4x plus y squared plus 6y plus 13. Okay? So, the center now is located at negative d over 2 and negative e over 2. But what is the value of d? Therefore, d is equal to 4, r e is equal to 6, and r f is equal to, since this is negative 13, we transfer that out to the left side that becomes positive 13 okay therefore this becomes negative d over 2 that is negative 4 over 2 negative e over 2 that becomes negative 6 over 2 and the center now is located at 
Negative 4 over 2, therefore, it becomes negative 2. Negative 6 over 2, that is negative 3. The center is located at negative 2, negative 3. So this is the center for this equation. And for the discriminant, again, we'll be using the formula d squared plus e squared minus 4f. Is it greater than 0? If it is greater than 0, therefore it is a circle. If it is equal to 0, it is a single point. And if it is um, less than 0, therefore it is an empty set. If it is a single point, therefore that point is just the center. Okay? So, let us now try to solve d squared minus e squared, therefore that is 4 squared plus e squared, which is 6 squared, minus 4 times 13. 4 squared is 16. 6 squared is 36. Negative 4 times 13 is negative 52. 16 plus 36 is 52. 52 minus 52 is 0. Therefore, our discriminant is 0. And if that is 0, therefore, we could say that this is a single point. So it is just a single point. Again, this is just a single point. And what is that point? That point is supposed to be the, the, the one that we have computed for the center. And that is negative 2, negative 3. This is the answer. It is a single point. Again, if you're able to get the value of r which is equal to zero or r squared which is equal to zero therefore it is a single point and that point is just the value you have computed for the center okay so let us now try the third example so we have x squared plus 10x plus y squared plus 8y plus 50 is equal to zero okay so let us try to get the value of d d is equal to 10 since that is the coefficient of x e is equal to 8 since that is the coefficient of y and f now is the constant and since we now have the constant on the left side we'll be having 50 for that one center is located at negative d over 2 negative e over 2 okay therefore this is equal to negative 10 over 2 and negative 8 over 2 and what is negative 10 over 2 and negative um, negative 8 over 2? Therefore, that is negative 5, negative 4. So this is now this supposed to be the center if it yields a circle. But let us now find out if it is really a circle using the discriminant d squared plus e squared minus 4f. Okay? So we'll be having 10 squared plus 8 squared minus 4 times 50. 10 squared is 100, 8 squared is 64, and 4 times 50 is 200. So we'll now be having 164 minus 200, and 164 minus 200 will give us an answer of negative 36. And negative 36 is less than 0. So if the value of the discriminant is less than 0, what can we say? Therefore, if that is negative, we could say that the equation is just an empty set. Therefore, it is an empty set. Okay? So we now have an example. We now have different examples when an equation yields a circle, it yields a single point, or it yields an empty set. Okay, what if we're now given this example? Okay, for the fourth example, we are given 2x squared plus 2y squared minus 12x plus 8y minus 24 is equal to 0. So based on the center, on the formula for the coordinate of the center, we'll be having negative d over 2 and negative e over 2. So this is for the center. Is it still applicable if we have the coefficients of x squared and y squared? Okay? So actually, all we have to do in order for this formula to be applied on this example is to divide all the terms by the coefficients of x squared and y squared and their, and their coefficients are just the same that is just 2 therefore if we have here 2x squared divided by 2 plus 2y squared divided by 2 plus 12x over 2 plus 8y over 2 minus 24 over 2 is equal to 0 cancel cancel x squared cancel cancel y squared negative 12x over 2 that is negative 6x positive 8y over 2 that is positive 4y negative 24 over 2 that is negative 12 
over 0. So if we have just divided this by 2, then that is just 0. Okay, so we will now be applying this one. But let us first identify the value of D, the value of E, and the value of F. For D, we'll be having the value as negative 6. For E, that is positive 4. And for F, that is negative 12. Okay, so using the discriminant, therefore, that is d squared minus e squared minus 4f. This becomes negative 6 squared minus 4 squared. This should be plus. This should be plus. So that is plus 4 squared minus 4 times negative 12. This is for the discriminant. How about for the center? Okay, for the center, so let us now try to solve for the center first. So that is negative d. So that is negative 6 over 2. Therefore, that is positive 3. For the y-coordinate, that is negative e over 2. So that is negative 4 over 2. That is negative 2. And the center is located at positive 3 and positive 3, negative 2. Okay, and for the discriminant now, Therefore, we'll be having negative 6 squared is 36 plus 4 squared is 16. Negative 4 times negative 12 is positive 48. Okay, so let's now try to add 36 plus 16 is 52. 52 plus 48 is 100. Therefore, 100 is greater than 0 and this is a circle. Therefore, we'll now be ready to compute for the value of the radius and that is d squared plus e squared minus 4f over 4. But since we are done computing the value of the discriminant d squared plus e squared minus 4f, so let us just try to substitute this, that on our equation. And that becomes what is d squared plus e squared minus 4f? That is 100. Therefore, it is equal to square root of 100 over 4. And the square root of 100 over 4 is just equal to the square root of 25. Therefore, r is equal to 5 units. Okay? So that is how we solve for the center and the radius of this one. Therefore, it is not a degenerate case. Therefore, this equation really yields an equation of the circle. And this is, if we graph this, therefore, it contains the center and the radius. And it is really a circle. Okay, so that is how we determine when an equation yields a circle. So I hope you have learned something from this video tutorial or video lesson again for the equation of the circle it may be a circle it may be a single point or an empty set the degenerate case would be um, a single point and an empty set always remember that for the circle to become a circle the discriminant d squared plus e squared minus 4f should be greater than zero if it is a single point therefore that should be equal to uh, is greater than for this one this should be greater than zero if it is a circle and if it is a single point that is equal to zero and if it is an empty set that becomes negative or less than zero so if you have questions comments suggestions do not hesitate to message me on facebook twitter and on instagram once again i am engineer jod edward hernandez saying that mathematics is always fun goodbye and god bless